All right, Brian Brush, Fire by Trade. Uh, I was just saying, uh, legitimately, one of my heroes, a uh, guy I look up to and admire. Uh, very excited to have you on the scrap number 23 and to talk shop, talk firefighting. And uh, just last week, we got to go to the flashover chamber with a set of rookies, and we got to sit outside and talk. And we sat there and said, or you, you had a great thing that you brought up, which was we have to be very careful with our messaging. So I want to lead off with that and let you run off and start talking. Well, I think what uh, what started the conversation was, you know, the, the flashover training a, a lot of times is you're bringing them into this atmosphere before they've really had any experience. And you're almost uh, you're just making it too intense and too overwhelming and, and too, too wild for them at first. And I think, you know, we kind of have to approach it from that crawl, walk, run uh, process. So that's why oh, yeah. we really focused on fire development and where it went and we, we really kind of process them through the day rather than taking them straight into flashover because the last thing we want is uh you know the way it was staggered we we had this uh fire behavior class this flashover class before their actual live burns uh for certification and the last thing we want is for them to go in into the real world thinking that pencil pencil is uh pencil, is the way pencil. to go so um you know but from that conversation as far as developing them and being careful on how we message we started talking a lot about how uh how coaching up skills and 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 more that progressive approach to people is important and uh it's spun even more into you know well what are we saying to the new people coming into our environment and uh we talked about our new hires and the new hiring process and how it's getting harder and harder to get people uh to apply to the fire service and i don't know if that's just a a job market as a as a whole but uh you know, we've certainly had new hires and new applicants ask questions about cancer and PTSD. And, um, you know, I think that that's, that's really something we need to be cautious with. We talk about recruiting when we talk about messaging and marketing when we're trying to hire new firefighters, but our day-to-day -day message to the public needs to be a little bit more positive. Um, everybody's dealing with suicide uh, as an as a issue all across the country. Um, every person's dealing with cancer at some point in their family. And um, I think uh, we're struggling with that too. We share that with the public, but I don't think we need to elevate that in the public. And I would hope that we would maybe take a look at ourselves and, and identify that we as firefighters are, are the protectors. We're not the protected. And I think those are the type of people we want to draw into this world is to um, place the service above ourselves. And, and uh, we're there to help victims we shouldn't be playing up uh, us as victims of, of these, these things. And I think um, the people who are proud of us, the people who understand our mission and, and, and recognize uh, what we're willing to do, they'll be there for us when we need them. And they'll be there to support us in our initiatives when we need them. But um, I don't know, uh, you kind of shared the same idea. So I'd like to hear what, uh, what, what you kind of think about that too. On the messaging, dude, I love when you said uh, protect, we are the protectors, not the protected. And just that mindset, and that's who we need to recruit and aim towards. And it is a mindset of uh, avoiding that victimhood mentality. And uh, I, uh, I really resonate with the fact of our message to the public is our recruitment message. And we just have to be very uh, cognizant that what we are putting out there is – the message that we want to recruit with and who we want to attract. And so I think that nailed it on the head when you start talking, like, like you said, and I, I don't want to sit here and repeat everything you said, but everybody's dealing with suicide. Everybody's dealing with cancer. You say it more eloquently than me. And, and it's just, but it's the truth. And I think that, um, I think one of the best ways of putting it is you recruit for attitude and everything else can be taught or recruit for motivation. Everything else can be learned. And so I think it starts there in the messaging so and i think you know we, we've we've talked about this at different times in our lives i mean pe people come to the fire service for job security people come to the fire service for the pension um you know and and we've highlighted those things in the in the past as far as recruitment tools um but once again you know in the in the time of social media in the time of things we we are you have to just recognize you're constantly marketing your department and um i think uh you know i i certainly don't want my my department to just be a department of the city. I want my fire department to be the pride of the city. 
And, uh, and the only way to do that is to show people what we're doing day in and day out and to, to, to show all the, the great things that we're doing and the, the lengths that we're willing to go for them. And um, I think that that's, that's what's always connected us with the community back to September 11th. Man, those guys were willing to go to great lengths for us in their day-to-day -day job. Then um, uh, maybe we, we should be there for them when they need our support. Busy guy. Sorry, boss. Oh, you're good. We'll just listen to you take it. <laughs> but the um, no, the uh, social media and it, the two-edged sword that it is, um, both uh, with our messaging and the scrutiny, everybody carries an HD camera in their pocket now. And so you, we, I, just in your class yesterday, we were one, you know, who, are we going to be the next ones being filmed on that ladder, making that grab or making that fail? And it's just such something as it, I don't think we even have a, quite a grasp on how heavy that is on the impact to the fire service yet, because it's so new to, to everything. Um, not just the sharing on the social media, just the fact that every person we pass and make a ride on has an HD camera in their pocket with full audio and everything. And so I know that as a young firefighter, I would sometimes inappropriately laugh at the, in the front yard during a, after a fire, you know, sitting there and cutting up. And I, it was a lesson I had to learn of, hey, that's not acceptable. That's a terrible message to the public. But now it's even more so because you could be the next viral la firefighter laughing at someone's tragedy, even though it has nothing to do with it, even though that's just us going to work. And, uh, and it's just, it's a responsibility that I think that we uh, definitely have not felt the full ramifications of yet. Yeah, I mean, I we had a, just after I got back from you yesterday, we had a, a fire in a Dollar General. So a, a commercial, you know, store uh, in the afternoon, there was people in the store. It was a busy intersection in town. Um, as I'm pulling in, there's people standing on the island uh, of a very busy street, the concrete island with their, you know, got, phones out recording it. Um, as I'm doing the 360, there's there's people all over, you know, recording it. And, uh, you know, there's two ways to look, look at it. It's, uh, well, you know, w what happens if we do something wrong or we're always on camera. But, um, man, we have great responsibility. Uh, it comes with great accountability. And there it's just go. it's just a, another another layer of it, man. And it, it's tough to be under the microscope. But um, if you don't want to live in the fishbowl, man, don't don't sign up. Don't. It's just like, <laughs> you know, just like uh, the Kobe Bryant's uh, years and years ago or, you know, the Charles Barkley. I'm not a role model. Any, any one of those people making those statements, it's you don't get to choose that. You know, when you become right. a public figure, when you become a, a place of public trust, um, you, you don't choose that you're not someone that that looks up to. It's just like being a parent. You know, I'm. You, you've uh, you, you've you've gotten into something where you you need to take full ownership of the responsibility and the accountability that comes with it. And if you you fail that, then you're you're failing big time in life. No doubt. And uh, I love what you said. Uh, sitting there when they're filming you on the island, you can look at it as a as a uh, you know I'm I'm under the microscope, or you can look at it as this is my reason I need to be on my top of my alpha game. Mm -hmm. You know, and this is why I put in those reps on the training ground and and on the drilled field and in the bay. Uh, is so that under that microscope I can excel, look good for my department, and make uh, the fire service proud. And what I, you know, it's it's kind of interesting. I look back at yesterday, and as I'm pulling in there, like it, it never crossed my mind that I was concerned about our guys. You know, uh, we've uh, I'm pulling in there as a supervisor, as a safety officer on this call. I know that there's a hundred cameras running, um, and it's a challenging incident, and I'm. You know, it, it, it gave me relief to look back on it from that angle and think I had no concerns. You know, I knew I, my guys were going to perform and, and they do great work. And um, it's like, keep the cameras rolling. You guys are going to see our guys do great things. That's awesome. No, and that faith, and, and I, I, I'm assuming uh, it just builds that trust in them, that, that faith you have in them builds that trust. And just it's just that cycle that feeds on itself. Mm -hmm. um, so I'll take a step back and I'm going to ask you, uh, I'm trying to think of the best way to phrase the question. Basically, like a, I'm trying to get inside the brain of Brian Brush. And so uh, what would you consider your biggest influencer going back to the, your, your youth as a firefighter? What made you start down this journey of being uh, the fire nerd you are today in your own words? Well, uh, 
you know, I, I think the, I think I found the service. I think I found the fire service because of the groundwork that my, my mother and my father uh, set with me, you know, as far as, um, you know, they both, uh, extreme, extremely high, you know, they valued work ethic really, really early on that was instilled in me. Um, both my parents worked, they took really good care of us. Uh, my dad was in construction. I was, you know, cleaning up job sites for him at a very young age, um, working on the weekends, working in the summer and, uh, just kind of learning how to grind, but also being around work and seeing them with other people and interacted. I mean, it was just, uh, um, both my parents took really good care of, of everybody that they were around. My dad took great care of his employees um, in developing them and supporting them and then being side by side. He wasn't afraid to jump in and help framing or, or, or do concrete work or anything like that. So when I think about that, um, as I came up through life, uh, you know, my neighbor was the assistant chief at the fire department. So, okay. you know, he came to me and kind of got me into volunteering at a very young age and once I got in that firehouse atmosphere, it was, you know, just like team sports. I mean, it, it just clicked, you know, and I, I think over. about, you know, I think about that for, you know, that's what draws so many people to the military at a young age is they're, they, as much as they say they don't want it, you know, from all the way through school, you have structure in your life. You have routine, you have demands, you have expectations, you have responsibilities, you're being held accountable on every single level. And I think probably subconsciously people think, well, you know, I'm not going to college. I'm about to take this, you know, am I really ready to step out into the real world without a plan? Right. And, no, without a doubt. And, and, and they aren't, you know, so they seek out the military so they can have that continued structure and support system and kind of development. Uh, you know, I, I saw a lot of great things in the fire service and that just happened to be the path that I went, you know, fortunately it was, two years before the military could have gotten into me, but I could certainly see that that would be the path that I went. You know, I pursued education and went and got uh, my, my bachelor's degree, went to school, um, but it was, I went into school for fire because that, that seed had already been planted in me. So um, yeah, man, I, I mean, I think it's, it's a great thing. I, I learned a lot of life lessons. I'm a, I'm a better, uh, better husband because of the fire service. I'm a better um, father because of the fire service. I'm a better coach because of the fire service. Um, you know, I, I think I'm probably a better member of, the, of society because of the core values okay. that, that were developed, uh, you know, started with my parents, uh, fed throughout school, and then uh, certainly more deeply entrenched in, in the fire service. And that's, again, another thing, you know, we talk about how fire service leads to divorce, fire service leads to all these things. Man, I, I you know, I, I can't, I can't say how people end up in those situations, but I know a lot of people who are in the fire service that are, are still with their spouses and who are deeply connected to people. And um, so I, I don't know. I don't, I don't see all the tragedy in what we do. I see great stuff, man. I, I wouldn't, I'm not proud of everything that I've done, but I, I wouldn't change anything that I've done. No, I have so much I won't say. Okay. So <laughs> your, parent, your parents, your parents basically started the hard work always works is what I'm getting at. On yes. That. Yes. It was instilled very young. Yes. Um, and then of course, uh, now were you California moved to Oklahoma and then back or was yeah. it Oklahoma, yeah. California back? I was or, born, or... And raised, born and raised in California. Um, okay. Got into the fire service. Um, wanted to go to school uh, at that time, Oklahoma state university of Maryland and uh, like Eastern Kentucky, I think were the, were the big fire schools, but, I came out, did a campus visit in Stillwater, and the classrooms were on the second and third floor of the fire station. Um, the dorm floor was all the fire students. I mean, I was just, I was hooked. It was like being in a firehouse and being in college, and it was, uh, that was where it went. Um, I moved to Colorado um, to work up there, uh, mainly because of the job opportunity at the time, um, but fell in love with Colorado, dug it, and uh, you know, ultimately decided to move back to Oklahoma, be a little bit closer to my wife's family, um, maybe give my kids just a little bit different of life, you know, with, with now five acres and some space and right. that stuff. So um, it's, it's been a wild ride, man. And people call me a fire gypsy or a fire nerd, but it, it's, you know, it, <laughs> it's really, uh, it's really uh, rounded me out well to go from volunteer, seasonal wildland firefighter, you know, a fire service academic being bachelor's and master's um, 
working in the metropolitan area and in the Denver area, and then now now serving uh, communities here in Oklahoma. Awesome. So now I'm going to switch tracks on you again and say, uh, you've traveled the country. You've been from coast to coast, uh, north, south, east, west, and you teach everywhere. You interact with a lot of firefighters. And I would say if you could, if I could put you on the spot and say, what do you think is the number one challenge facing the American Fire Service? Um, go. Um, well, I guess it would be complacency, you know, that uh, in which – the, the root of that complacency is, is negativity. You know, you and I have talked a lot about that. Just um, we don't go to fires or that's not important. Um, so on the spot, one word, the biggest threat to the fire service is negativity. That's, that's hard to argue with. <laughs> that's really hard to argue with. I made my son listen to a podcast just yesterday, and it says when your mindset – when your mindset is wrong, you make the wrong choices. It's just that simple. When your attitude is wrong, you make the wrong choices. Then it compounds, and it compounds. And so, uh, yeah, it's hard to argue with that. Very good answer. <laughs> um, uh, what was I? What was the next thing I'm going to hit you with? You've got uh, fire by trade. Now, would you say you, you were a truckie for how long? Were you a truckie? Well, um, you know, I, I did. I did a few years on when I first promoted I promoted to a, an engine in a truck house so I spent some spent some time there and then when they closed the rescue I went back to the truck house um, but I I guess you know I kind of as a firefighter I spent some time in the truck house we were you come in the fire service you're, you're going to be an engine guy you know that just is that's that's our that's our foundation uh, you get exposed to the truck I'd spent a lot of my time in the uh, rescue company which um, you know in they are the utility player they're you know gabe and jemmy nailed it he's like the, the heavy rescue in a, in a in a city you know or in a department that has a fully staffed uh, citywide rescue you're the free safety of the fire scene you know nothing nice. should get by you you know we talk about them being the utility players of the jack of all but i love that idea of being the free safety you the know free you, safety floating back there yeah, yeah you're, you're kind of you could get plugged in to do you know go to the roof or do a search or help with the handline or force doors or be writ and uh I always loved that, you know, I, I never viewed it as, as, uh, as diluting my skill sets. I saw it as, as a, as a challenge to be the best in every single area that I could possibly be. And I just dove into everything. Um, so, uh, yes, yeah, I got truck background, uh, that type of stuff, but I think most of my truck background came from, um, being in the rescue company and, and um, and, and being, being able to be flexible with support functions um, and, and not just the suppression functions. No, that's awesome. Because I was going to, my next question was, do you consider yourself an engine guy or a truck guy? But I think you answered it right there. <laughs> I consider with the myself a fire nerd. Yeah. Yeah. The yeah. fire, the free safety fire nerd. Yeah. Uh, no, I, I got to sit through your ladders class yesterday and uh, I mean, I knew you as a hose guy, nozzle guy, you know what I'm saying? And then I get to see the ladder side and it's just impressive, man. And I, and I don't know if I've ever even told you this, but your first uh, fire leadership conference in Edmond is one of the reasons I started doing Firehouse Vigilance when you with, brought Von Oppen and, and Walker. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yes, that was amazing. And so the impact you've had just in my life is 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 uh, crazy. And now even in ripples, of course. Um, Minuteman load. I was going to ask you about the Minuteman load, how much work you've done perfecting the Minuteman load and your modified Minuteman load. Uh, our department is, is looking at going completely to the minimum load. Um, I'm trying to think of I mean, basically, I, will, I won't claim it, you, you know, uh, it sure. was, uh, I, you know, I worked with the, worked with the flat load, uh, in Northern California and it was really, really versatile. Um, and like we, you could turn that into minimans. And so I was familiar with, you know, hose on my shoulder, you know, I was, uh, that's kind of, the way I look at it is you, we have all these different hose loads, but um, when it comes down to it, flat load, minute man load, like I, I grew up and was raised in a, in a fire service that had hose on my shoulder. Um, I came out to Oklahoma and, and uh, was exposed to the triple layer and uh, it just never seemed to really click for me that I'd be dragging hose all over the place. Um, uh, went to West Metro, they were running the flat load. Um, I dug it, and while I was there, they went through a, a hose uh, evaluation, and uh, they concluded on the modified Minuteman, which is a strapped bundle. So right. you don't know what you don't know. You know, that was, that was our hose load for a, a long time that I was there. I saw the versatility and the portability of it, and, and um, you know, uh, 
just basically you, you teach what you know and what you learned. And, and that's kind of, um, I guess I didn't, didn't realize in going outside of there, how, how many people just, uh, you know, liked the concept and, and, and uh, appreciated what we had developed over time with the benefits of, of always having a hose bundle. Um, that, and it was, it, it I mean, I, to this day, I think it's a, it's a great, great option for a lot of suburban farmers. I think in a real urban setting where you're, you're shaking hose or shedding hose right off of the street because of tight parking or you're going vertical, uh, maybe it should, shouldn't be bundled so you can flake all the time. But um, in a suburban environment, and I think the modified Miniman is, is a great tool. No, and, and you came and gave a, uh, and I, this is the thing about uh, being at more fire department is we get to have Brian Brush come in, you know, like it's no big deal. Just come in and show us stuff and teach us a class. And that's awesome. I can never say thank you enough. The, uh, you came in and did the, just a hose handling class one day and you did a, you did a quick condensed version of the history of nozzles, history of hose. And it was a good day. But then at the end of it, we kind of drug you to the side and kept you there extra time and, and made you show us the minute man. And uh, so at some point, I'm going to get you and get a camera and have you show us all the versatility that you figured out on this thing from the loops to draw them back to grabbing the, the coupling and the nozzle and going forward. Um, just all of that. And uh, but we're uh, anyway, I, could, I don't want to nerd out too much on just the Minuteman load. Um, what all have you got coming up this year? You know, I, I think first and foremost, my focus is my new role, you know, being a, being a training chief. I, I'm so excited about having an organizational impact and that that is that is my focus uh in the background i'm in school uh working on my master's degree right now i finally have my my practicum tuned in and i'm going to start start working towards that uh ef my fourth year of my efo is is uh, first week of march second week of march i'll be graduating from that so that'll be a nice thing to kind of lock up and put me put behind me so um you know i'm I'm uh, not on the road as much uh, doing teaching and training because, you know, I've, I've, I've got that opportunity in, internally, you know, to work with, uh, work with the fire department. And, uh, um, but I'm still going to be out and about uh, FDIC is coming up. Uh, so we'll, we'll be there both doing the hands-on training with the stretching for success guys and then doing my classroom. Um, I'm really excited about being at FDIC. Uh, four members from our department will be there. So get to uh, not only experience it as an instructor, as I have for the last 10 years, but, uh, you know, to, to, to share that uh, environment with guys from my own, own department and, and continue to build that, that culture and that exposure. Um, and then beyond that, man, uh, water on the fire in Pensacola. You know, I, I wish I, I could be down, wish I could be down there next week for the leadership and tactics class. We're sending four of our people down for that one. Nice. Um, uh, I'm going to hopefully going to be at the command officer boot camp as a student. So, uh, you know, the, the command role is a, is a new position for me uh, here. So that level of leadership and, and understanding, I'm, I guess that's, you know, um, what's on tap for me on tap is, uh, you know, I've, I always kind of switch back and forth between being the student and, and being the, the, the presenter and, uh, this this year and and hopefully the next couple of years i i can really get back to focusing on being a student i think through the places that i've exposed people i think through uh fire by trade i've um and just you know just in in contact even with you man i think i think i've developed enough other people that are taking the lead on on spreading the message and sharing the the, the ideas and, and the culture and just and good stuff that um me stepping away from it is, is going to be filled in probably, you know, by way more than just me. So um, I'm happy to step aside and let a lot of pe more people take over that, that spot and, uh, and get back to developing myself for, for what the future holds for me in, in this new role. Dude, that's awesome. You got a lot, you have your fingers. You just got pies, man. If I'm not doing a million things, I don't feel like I'm doing anything. So uh, it's tough. <laughs> I understand that. Believe me, the uh, white helmet. Now I know this is new for you. What do you, what, what is your take on putting on a white helmet? Cause I, I mean, I'll just, I'll just preface my question because it messed with my head uh, when I promoted and got off the fire apparatus, you know, it got off the engine. I mean, I'm like, I'm like, am I even a firefighter anymore? You know, yeah. there's kind of this, this existential crisis for myself, but I love it. Don't get me wrong. Uh, so I wanted to get your take on this new role you are in. You know, I think a, a little bit of it I went through uh, personally when I moved into training. You know, it's like you, you had like uh, that role of, well, I'm not going to be on the rig anymore. I'm going to be in an office. You know, 
am I going to still be relevant? Um, is it okay to work eight to five and not work a shift? You know, like you, you there's all these kind of uh, egotistical questions, but they're really just, I mean, they're at the root of it. You're just concerned of, are you, are you really going to be as good in, in challenging yourself and taking on this new role? Um, you know, I, I, I felt like, yeah, I'm great in training out at places where people will pay for classes um, and they already want to be there. I'm really good at being an instructor preaching to the choir, but can I, can I be that person for an organization? Um, can I be both a good soldier and a good leader in, in rolling out programs that are, that fit what I want to do or, or that uh, challenge me? And um, so it, it was good to having three years in the training division as a, as a assistant training officer before I moved up to chief. But man, I, I think, um, you know, some people will say, you know, I never want to be a chief. Some people, uh, but um, guys like you and I, man, we want the ball, you know, like if we're going to, if we're going to be on the field, we want the ball. I, I if I, you know, as a firefighter, uh, I loved being put in the situations, but I always aspired to be an officer and, 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 and have that squared away crew. And um, as an officer, man, I'm thinking, man, I'm doing a really good job developing this company and, and the neighboring companies and we're working together, man, what could I do this uh, in the training division? You're in the training division and you're thinking, well, could I do this for a department? So um, I think that that's what I've noticed is, is, is if you do the right things that it, you can kind of you have that good plan, you have that good system, you have that good methodology, you can, you can take it other places. I think back to what I developed in, in one company at, at West Metro, we took it to another company. You know, a lot of the guys followed um, beyond the department walls. I think uh, the fire culture that myself and uh, stair climb folks and irons and ladders folks, the, the fire culture that we developed in Colorado um, grew and, and took off and thrived. And, you know, coming here to Oklahoma, I think it's, it's the right mix of people in the right places and we're doing it again. Um, I think you see oh, it yeah. nas nationally developing. So, um, you know, you, you, you want to, you want to test your theories, you want to test your abilities. And, and, uh, you know, I, I guess that's, that's the thing is I, I want to be the closer. I want to either go big or fail big because either way I'm winning. So <clears throat> that's awesome, man. That right there is awesome. I want the ball. I want to fill me. Uh, there. Um, no, and what uh, Chief Stager, Chief Brush, uh, Court, Justin, uh, Lorenzen, and Smith, uh, all you guys, what you got going on in this Metro thing going, it's kind of just brewing and percolating and uh, building on itself. It's amazing. Um, and so it's exciting to be, like, even on the periphery watching it and being a part of it, and uh, it's exciting. So uh, I always like to ask um, my guests, uh, Firefighters generally don't read. As a general rule, firefighters aren't readers. But mm -hmm. I always try to suggest books for firefighters to read. And so I always ask my guests if there is a book that they would suggest for anybody who might be listening that they need to read, just to put you on the spot. Uh, man, I kind of I kind of always default to Deep Survival as one of my go-tos. Um, there's just a, there's a lot of great lessons in it. Uh, uh, kind of flipped the switch in a lot of areas for me really well written um and uh you know you spin off into a lot of technical things from there i mean it 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 was a good uh a good trunk of of information because you you'll chase down a lot of things out of there uh, so that's a it's a great place to start it's an easy read for read for firefighters because it's it's really good stories it's um it's great uh, narrative it's it's excellent writing um Okay. You know, I, I could throw out some technical books. I could throw out some some other things, but I think that one's a, a right mix that pretty much anybody um, anybody that reads it will take something from it, and it will probably, without a doubt, uh, light a fire in you in, in some area of interest. So, deep survival. Mm -hmm. Okay, I don't know the yeah. books. So that's why I'm asking. So I, a, I'm going to yeah, get by, that book by Lawrence Gonzalez. So yeah, yeah. Gonzalez. Okay, I'm going to write that down. One sec. I saw your I saw your bookshelf. You probably don't. Your your wife's gonna kill you with your Amazon. My yeah. Well, uh, it's uh, it. Uh, the thing is, is I'm getting behind. Like now, I gotta get Deep Survival. So I'm, my my <laughs> to read list is getting longer and longer as I and so it's never enough time in the day. Uh, but I'm addicted to reading, and so I love uh, getting new books. And and when I get them from people I respect who say this is a book you should read, that's my favorite <laughs> thing. Um, Brian. Uh, yeah. I can't think of uh, 
someone I could talk to for longer and sit here and, and uh, just just pick your brain from ladders to two and a half to nozzles to fire streams to uh, fire behavior and um, I want to I have to I, I'm going to bring you back is what I'm going to do and so uh, at some point because I want to talk about the UL NIST studies I want to talk about um, ventilation oh so much stuff to pick your brain about but I will um, leave it it's a nice uh, nice bite sized chunk for people to absorb. Uh, I'm going to let you get back to all of your pies and say thank you so much for being a guest on the Weekly Scrap. Uh, next week, John Spira with his book, Mindset, talking to him about Fit to Fight Fire. This week, Fire by Trade, hard work always works. Uh, Brian Brush, spreading the wisdom. Uh, thank you for coming on, man, and being a guest. Uh, My pleasure. To everybody watching, I want to say uh, I hope the tone stays silent. Unless it's burning, be safe out there. Thanks, brother. Thank you.